Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, my name is Nicholas Franco, and I'm an undergraduate student here at Kennesaw State University, studying international affairs um, and enjoying an international service and diplomacy concentration. Today, I am presenting on multilingual culture within Morocco and, um, for context, Algeria a little bit, understanding connections between the Amazigh and the Arab communities. So I first want to describe a little bit how I have approached culture. So I have approached culture with the idea that it is based on relevant information, cuisine, religion, values, and language. And we'll be visiting this a little bit forward. Um, the idea of universal culture and its ac access grants for empowerment. So definitely very important for very important for a variety of communities to be able to access um, what this empowerment could hold. Try the try that one. Thank you. I want to call upon um, this quote right here, um, which states, to withhold traditional culture from school curriculum and therefore from students in the name of progressive ideas is in fact an unprogressive action that helps preserve, and preserve the political and economic status quo. And I want to replace this with two ideas, traditional culture with Amazigh culture and the concept of progressive ideas, perhaps with Arabization. So to withhold Amazigh culture from school curriculum and therefore from students in the name of Arabization ideas is in fact an unprogressive action that helps preserve the political and economic status quo. So is this true? Um, this is a, definitely a conversation that we could have. And what becomes universal, I want to definitely say, what becomes universal culture is not based on merit. It's rather based on what is called the accidents of culture, which is frequency. Um, this is very problematic as it, as it creates a, a disparity between those who have an access to what could be frequent and those who do not. So national culture, I want to criticize a little bit some of the conversation on national culture. Um, some say that nationalism is a mastery of national culture, when in reality, nationalism is the conglomeration and the discourse that, div that different cultures provide. I also want to describe how some say that mastery of standard language is essential to the mastery of a national culture. What about those who have multiple official languages, national languages, and who have multiple standardized languages within their structure? This begs of the question, is it essential to master Dirija or Fuzha to master Moroccan culture? I also want to describe perhaps the idea that education stabilizes national language through national standardization. Is this true? The teaching of a common language promotes a culture and acculturates students which creates a national identity. By only focusing on one standardized culture, do we choose and force all other students to accept this one culture and then divide the rest? Perhaps, it's another, another interesting conversation. So I want to describe a little bit Clifford Geertz and his idea of nationalism. He says, once aroused, the desire to become a people rather than a population is recognized and respected as someone who is recognized and respected in the world who counts and is attended to is short of satisfaction, apparently unappeased. So there, according to Geertz, there are four different stages of nationalism. Um, the first is that in which the nationalist movements are formed and crystallized, that in which they are triumphed, and that in which they are organized themselves into states, that in which they find themselves obligated to define and stabilize their relationships to states and to other regular societies. I believe that Morocco is perhaps in the fourth stage um, as it has reintegrated itself into the African Union um, as it addresses some of these cultural issues and this conversation on the Amazigh community. So who are the Amazigh? They are, are a people. They are an indigenous group throughout um, the Maghreb. We see them in Libya, we see them in Algeria, we see them in Morocco, we see them in Mali, Niger, even a little bit in Egypt. Um, and 40 to 45% um, of Moroccans are speakers of Amazigh language. These are projected numbers. In Algeria, 20 to 25, Libya, 8 to 9, and Tunisia, 1%. The Amazigh are composed of what depending on who you ask and depending on the different groups that have come and conquered, the Africans, the Numidians, the Moors, the Libyans, the Punics, and Phoenicians. This one ethnic group has um, separated and created its own different governances, um, as we see here. They were, in response, conquered by the Carthaginians, Romans, Byzantines, Arab Muslims, Spanish, French. I mean, throughout this time, they were able to engage in these, uh, under these um, conquering groups, uh, but they were also able to engage in conversations with the indigenous Jews as well as the Greeks. Um, the indigenous Jews, that relationship has been contested by different scholars, um, some saying that this claim only is as a result to push away an Islamic agenda. Um, others say that the 
conversation that states that this is um, not true is one that separates the Imazighen from the Moroccan groups. So in the Kingdom of Morocco, a little bit more of a focus on the kingdom. In constructing the Moroccan state, following independence in 1956, um, the kingdom focused on an Arab definition. They joined the League of Arab States, eventually joined the Arab Maghreb Union. Um, they chose Arabic as the first and sole official language and maintained Islam as a state religion. This has changed, especially following the constitutional ref reforms. They maintained education and territorial integrity as top priorities, respectively. Um, the importation of thousands of Arabic teachers to replace French with standardized Arabic um, is definitely key of that, and territorial integration, or integrity, excuse me, um, following the French protectorate. So what is Arabization? Um, Arabization provides um, an Arab Muslim identity and unification through Fusha um, against a foreign idea, or in this case, French, and the French culture. Um, it effectively sought to replace um, Amazigh languages with Arabic. This took a few centuries, actually, um, and is still in the process. We have seen, since the end of the French protectorate, approximately 50% drop in speakers of Amazigh languages. Another interesting effect is that between the Amazigh community and the Jewish communities. The Jewish communities utilize Amazigh languages to um, enact their quotidian lives. They used their Hebrew, um, they began to use their Hebrew solely within their religious life. So it's interesting to see that they put away um, their Hebrew language and took up the Amazigh languages. One criticism of, of Arabization, Arabization is the use of Al-Qari to define literacy and who is literate. Um, this is to say that Al-Qari is the one who can read. Um, and if you can read, that is defined by recitation, tajweed, what is taught in madrasa schools. Um, unfortunately, as we see throughout the larger Muslim world, those who are outside of the Middle East and North Africa, um, the madrasas teach recitation tajweed solely and cannot engage in Arabic culture outside of the religious context. Um, so is that truly literacy? Uh, Arabization maintains Amazigh culture as folklore, and this begs the question, where are we today? Are we in a system of Arabization, or are we seeing some Moroccanization take place? The Amazighite and globalism um, this is a quote by Ernest Gellner in 1972. He claims, in his heart, the Berber knows that Allah speaks Arabic and modernity speaks French. Um, this has been greatly criticized since. Um, Dr. Maddie Weitzman says, yes, even though we see that there has been a drop in Amazigh speaking within the Berber communities, um, since 1956, this is not true. Um, we see that the Amazighite is very flexible in addressing their rights and their demands. Um, they seek recognition of Amazigh languages rather than the reconstruction of the Moroccan state. And this is one of the effects of globalism. Um, another aspect of the Amazigh culture is the avoiding, idea of avoiding nationalism. So Irkum and the Berber Manifesto. So in 2001, the kingdom created Institut Royal de la Culture Amazigh. Um, this was headed by Mohammed Shafiq, which is one of the mentors of the King Mohammed VI. Um, the he was from Fez. Um, since the end of his term leading the Institute, uh, we have seen a rise in leadership from the south of Morocco, um, which has caused some issues within Irkum. Also, the relationship with Istiklal and Mahzen has provided a substantial budget and also an increase in equipment, which has been supported and criticized by some. The Berber Manifesto of 2000 was introduced um, with this phrase, we the Amazigh are brothers to the Arabs wherever they live, trying to portray the fact that we are not here to reconstruct, but to be recognized. They say that we have a common history, strong ties, and they also have a place in the Ummah. Another critique of the Institute is the fact that there is a lack of higher education reform. Today, some of the universities throughout Morocco do teach Amazigh languages, but it's more of a private basis. And then we go into the script debate, 2002 to 2003. So when we're discussing the use of Amazigh languages, they came to be, how are we going to put this in the public sphere as has been demanded within the manifesto? Um, so they offered three options. We have the Arabic script, which is already used throughout the Middle East and North Africa. Um, Tafinakh revised, which is said to be created out of hieroglyphics um, from earlier, much earlier, um, Amazigh uh, groups. And then the Latin script, which is used in English, Spanish, French. Um, it has a lot of ties to the West, as well as the um, 
the French and Spanish colonization. So of course, the Arabic was preferred by a lot of um, Islamist politicians, and Latin was preferred by a lot of the Amazigh community um, as a result of already speaking or being taught uh, French. So it took nine years since 2003 for Moroccan dialects, as termed by um, the government, for them to be taught in schools. These three scripts um, have been difficult to learn, of course, and adding Tafinah would delay literacy in the rural areas, which disproportionately includes the Amazigh communities. Um, something to ponder is the relationship between the process of the public construction of languages and linguistic, the linguistic construction of publics. So where do we fall today? A quick term on Algeria, just for point of, of, of context and maybe comparison. Um, Algeria, again, the Arabic language, Islam and territorial nationalism as focuses, the rejecting of the century of French colonization. In 1935, we see um, the Amazigh communities adopting um, a chant from other African protesting groups, l'Afrique or l'Africaine, um, Africa two or four or um, by Africans, while accepting French culture and language, which is interesting, um, the way that that paradox works. Um, main, they maintain a fidelity to Amazigh languages and culture. We then follow this with the 1985 protests, which were violent, uh, Le Printemps Noir, Black September 2001, which were also violent. Um, Hudman Massine was um, arrested and put into prison. He was originally called Hurmed um, Kasim, um, which is interesting because Kasim being an Arab last name, um, Abdulaziz Bouteflika, the president of Algeria at the time, chose to use a different name. It later became known that he was Amazigh because they found his actual last name was Masinissa, which is the name of an Amazigh king from earlier Algerian history. These, um, these protests also created more of a discussion on Kabili autonomy within Algeria. Um, we see, however, earlier education of Tamazia um, in 1995, but they used multiple scripts. So even a greater problem within uh, the Amazigh community in the way that they are taught and learning their own language. Um, they did have 2002 constitutional reforms in which um, Amazigh languages were nationalized, and then in 2016 where the constitutional reform made these Amazigh languages um, official languages. I do want to close with uh, this right here. This is a campaign picture of President uh, Abdulaziz Bouteflika, who is still in power um, since 1995. This is in 2004. Um, this was after some of these protests, and he was demanded to respond on the question of how is Algeria going to respond and incorporate this, the Amazigh community. Um, and he responded very simply, if you see, nah, nah, Arab Amazigh, instead of, which translates to, we are Arab Amazigh, instead of saying, um, this is the policy we're going to take, he kind of swept it under the rug by saying, we're the same. Um, the Amazigh community is Arab in nature and just chose to not progress with everyone else, which is innately problematic and almost symbolizes the way that um, Algeria, Libya, and maybe other North African governments have proceeded with the answering of the Amazigh question. I want to close with this, um, this quote by Bruce Matty Weitzman, who is researched extensively and partaken directly with the Amazigh communities throughout North Africa. He says, Berber Arab differences throughout history have been socially enduring, but nonetheless muted. Thank you for your time.